Now, if you have this first spreadsheet done, then you can finish calculating some of the performance matrix, such as uh, flow time. Okay. And for example, if you want to calculate flow time um, to get the average, the variance, the minimum, maximum, then you come to here. For example, for every item, um, we can calculate the flow time. That equals to the this number here represents the time that this first item exited the system. Um, and this time here represents the time that the item entered into the system. So you can just take the difference between these two and uh, double click here. Group to couple to, to finish up them. And uh, shift control on score db. Okay, so this will give you the flow time for all of them. And what you need to do will be just do the average um, variance minimum maximum maximum for example the average uh, those are the simple Excel formulas you'll be able to use. Okay, so for those number here then goes to here. So for example, this uh, average number equals to be uh, what you calculated here. Okay. And so on. So you can calculate the rest of them. Um, if you understand the, <clears throat> what the value adding time is, then those are basically the processing time. You add them together. Make sure you don't add the interarrival time, the first column. Okay. The waiting time would be the flow time subtract the value adding time would be the waiting time. But remember, you have to do this for um, every item here. Every item then then take the average variance minimum maximum down here, and they'll fill in this matrix. Okay, what I want to focus on in this video is uh, this here, the utilization. To calculate the utilization, back to the slides here. For the utilization, if it's a single capacity, then you want to make sure that uh, you calculate the number of time units this uh, um, this machine or this location is in use and divided by the total time units. So we do have 96 here. And uh, to get uh, the number of time units, number of time units this machine is in use, we do need to calculate that state variable. Uh, we mentioned that um, earlier in the lecture that you have the um, dependent variable, independent variable. But you also have the state variable represent if a location is in use or not. And to calculate the dependent variables such as utilization, you need to get the state variable first. So we need to get the state variable for each machine to see among those, uh, um, for every one minute among those 96 minutes, how many minutes uh, or which of those 96 minutes is that machine in use? Now, if we go back to our spreadsheet, <clears throat> here, we need to create something. I would create a new spreadsheet, but to make it easier to do the calculation, I'll continue with the spreadsheet here first, and then copy them, copy the results. Okay, so this will be my minute. One, two. I want to go all the way to ninety-six minutes. Okay, the purpose is to find out, for example, the receiving dock, or say the splitter. Let's do the splitter first. Um, 
number of items in it in use or not okay so i want to make it general so i can use it uh, this is for all of the locations so number of in use and uh, for the lace queue it's the same number of items in use and the state so lace queue lace in boot open So what I want to do is first I want to find out how many items are there in that location at this minute and whether the location is in use or not. So um, of course for those single capacity machines the number of items in that location at specific minute will either be one or zero. So you can imagine this back, this column here and this column will be the same. If it's one then it will be in use so it's also one. If it's zero, no item in there, then it's not in use. But for those ones with the multi capacities like the receiving dock, the lace queue, and the storage, those have more capa more than one capacity. So the item in use here, as long as it's greater than zero, then here will be one. It is in use. If it's um, um, zero, um, then in use will be zero. So let's do a formula that's general enough that can be applied to all the different locations. If you think about how to calculate at a certain time, how many items are there in this location? What's the logical thinking that can lead to the calculation here? For example, minute one. Is there any item in the receiving dock at minute one? No, because the first item entered at 2.92. So minute one, there's no nothing here, right? But instead of just put a zero there, we don't want to do that. We want to put a formula that's general enough. So that can be applied to all the locations, all the minutes. Let's think about here, for example, um, let's think about the minute two. So for minute one and two, we're not going to consider because those are before the system, before the even the first item entered the system. Let's look at, for example, minute four, okay. Are there any item, or how many items are there in the receiving dog at minute four? You can see the first item entered into the uh, receiving dog and exits immediately. Okay, and the second one entered at 4.48, still after minute 4. So again, minute 4, there's nothing in the receiving dock. What about, uh, say, minute 16? Okay, let's look at minute 16. If we scroll down to here, the eighth item entered into the receiving dock at minute 13, and the exit at minutes 16.13 what does that mean it means that at minute 16 this ace item is in the receiving dock okay so we, we find there's one item in the receiving dock at minute 16. what about the minute 30 let's look at minute 30. for minute 30 basically we want to look at this item here is so okay. A minute thirty point oh four. This fourth fifteen, the fourteenth item exit, and uh, this fourteenth item entered at minute twenty three, almost twenty four, and uh, exit thirty point four. So this fourteen item is in that receiving dock at a minute thirty. Okay. Anything else? If I keep looking, fifteen. Item 15, 2, it entered 25 minutes and finished at exit 32, 31 minutes. So at the minute 30, it is in there. Same as 16. Item 16 entered the system, entered the receiving dock at 27, 
and exited 33. So at minute 30, it is in that receiving dock. Same with 17. It entered at minute 29 and exited at minute 36. So at minute 30, it is still in the receiving dock. Anything else? If you keep looking, item 18 entered after 31 minutes. So that means uh, starting from this item, it's not in that receiving dock at minute 30. So with this analysis, I hope you find some of the rules that uh, to determine that we can use to determine whether at a certain minute, if there's any item there, you need to look at these two values here. Okay. If we want to look at minute 30, we look at, we look at this entire column to see if there's any value that's before enter before minute 30, because those are the time that uh, uh, logs uh, enter there. So all of these ones, all of these ones are before minute 30. So all those items so one through 17, they entered the receiving dock before minute 30. If they are still in that, in that receiving dock at minute 30, then the receiving dock will have this many items there. Okay, but how do we know if they are still in that receiving dock? Then we look at exit time. If the exit time is uh, greater than 30, then that means that item is still in that receiving dock. So we only found these four. Okay, so basically only these four items uh, has uh, a entering number, entering time that's earlier, that's before 30 minutes and an exit time that's after minute 30. So this is the rule that we're going to put. We're going to find at a certain minute if any of those numbers are less than that number, meaning an, meaning an item entered before that minute, and at the same time, if its corresponding exiting time is greater than that minute, so that means the item is still in that receiving dock at that time. Okay, so I'm going to introduce a formula called if uh, as um, uh, a formula called um, count if as count if as. So what does count if as does here? Count if as. This is a, by the way, this is a one of the websites I use to um, learn Excel formulas. So if you still don't know count if as, take a look at here. Okay. So the count if as kind of cells that match multiple criteria. So what we want is a, um, the cells need to match two criteria. First, uh, the exit, the entering time need to be less than the current minute of question. Okay, and the second, the exiting time need to be greater than the current minute in question. So we have two criteria, and um, we're going to count how many are there. Um, how you do that is you put uh, count if uh, then the ranges. Uh, uh, the range and the criteria. And uh, so let's look at just some examples here. Here, look at this one. Count if uh, this range is less than a value that's uh, within this B1. Okay, so if we think about what we want to do, we want to count the entering range the entering time, um, if they are greater than, oh, sorry, if they are less than the current minute that we are considered. And uh, um, at the same time, so we're going to add one more, um, uh, just uh, here, because we can use more than. Okay, here, you see this is the range one criteria one, and then we can do another. 
So the range would be the exiting time range and uh, need to be less than equal to the uh, current time that's stored in the, um, in the cell. And then make sure that when you want to refer to a, a value stored in the cell, you need to put that in a quote, like less than equal to quote, and this and the sign here. That that's the special thing that the county of uh, county of s use. You need to have this and the sign here before that cell that you want to refer to. Okay, so let's go back to our calculation. Okay, so we're going to for any minute. Okay, we're going to do count if s our criteria range first is this so this range need to be it's the entering range okay we want the item to enter before the current minute so need to be less than the current minute the current minute is stored in here okay and another criteria is that we want our second range the exiting range need to be now in to be greater than okay because we want item to exit the receiving dock after this concerned minute greater than current minute okay so we want to copy this cell all the way down so that's applied to every minute but we don't want our range to move so we're going to put dollar signs before the row numbers or you can fix the entire column um, that that's fine too so you would put the dollar sign before both the column and row number okay oh, actually not because we want to copy this uh, formula to the left to the right too so we want to copy to use all of them here we don't want to re-enter the formula okay so we just put the dollar sign before the row number so when we copy the numbers down it won't shift Okay, now let's take a close look at it. Okay, it counts this uh, um, entering time of the items to the receiving dock to see if they are less than equal to, if they are less than this current minute. And uh, it counts the exiting time of the items uh, uh, from the receiving dock to see if they are greater than this current minute. If any of those, uh, um, met, any of those cells uh, um, meet those two criteria then that means at this specific minute that item is there so we count how many times this happens if it for example that the 30 minute one it happened four times then we will return it will return four so it will tell us okay four items are there so let's oh, double click and it will copy all the way okay just check you see here the minute 30, at the minute 30, there are four items in the system as what we just counted. Okay, and uh, it checks um, the, the entering. So it checks the entering time, exiting time um, with our current minute to see how many items meet that criteria. Okay, now. With that defined, we know how many items are there, and then we can just use a simple if statement. Say, if this one is greater than zero, then return one, um, else return zero. If uh, there's one item there, we'll just say it is in use. Okay. okay, so next we want to copy those uh, formulas to use to the other machines. And... Um, so copy this this formula here to here and to here to calculate the number of items in those different locations. And before we copy it, we want to make sure that um, those cells get shifted or fixed um, in the right way. Okay. One thing we want to fix is this number, the minute here. 
we don't want the minute to move. Uh, regardless of which machine that we're going to work with, the minute should stay here. So let's put uh, the sign before this minute, before the column. Um, and uh, yeah, let's just double click. Okay. And then when we move, let's just copy this one here. When we copy this item, number of item for the splitter, uh, the minute did get fixed. However, if you notice, for the receiving dog, we only have the entering time and the exit time. But for the splitter, so that's for all the old working machines, okay? The buffers and the, um, the storage systems, they only have, they don't have operating time. So they only have entering and exiting time. But for those uh, working machines, the uh, locations, they have a uh, processing time. So that's why we have three columns, the enter, complete, and exit. So we do want our um, second column to be shifted to this exit time. So it's uh, comparing the entering time and, exit uh, and the exit time to make sure that there's uh, one item there. Um, here we are not differentiating whether the item is being worked or it's simply blocked and blocking that machine. Um, we just uh, assume that if an item is in the machine, then the machine is in use. Okay. So here it did uh, copy the formula correctly. So it's comparing these two I these two columns to the current minute uh, for the utilization. We can copy it directly. Okay, and then we can double click and then double click to make sure that it copies. Okay, so you can see the splitter, the item there is basically zero or one, and that match the um, state variable whether it's in use or not. Okay, so we just want to click into the last formula to see. Okay, so it, it's comparing the 96 minutes um, with the two columns here. Okay, so now we get the formulas all um, down for the two types of locations, the, the, the buffer type of locations and the working machine locations. And we can just copy them um, to those rest ones. So the last queue is a buffer kind. So I'm going to select these two and uh, um, click shift control down. So copy this entire area and then copy all the formulas to here. Okay, and then another location I want to copy this is to the painted storage. Okay. And then for those uh, machine, um, working machine type locations, again, shift the control down arrow. It will help you select this entire area. And then copy to those locations that has uh, three columns of time. Okay, books. Open. Okay. With this, we are done with calculating those uh, um, state variables, and I'm going to just uh, make it easier to do the calculation. Okay, I'm going to again shift control, copy this entire thing. So, control copy, and then I'm going to create a new sheet. Um, click paste the special because I don't want those formulas in. That refers to some cells that's blank here. Okay, um, just copy the values, and then I also want those headings. I don't. I want to make sure I know which location I'm working with. So copy the headings to this sheet, and then we're going to delete those uh, um, blank columns. Okay, so now we have the locations, we have all the minutes.
through all borders.